You have a lot of people pointing at you, so let's do it. Yeah, just, yeah don't, don't be proud of that hat. Um, just stand up and ask your question. I knew we'd get a Federer. What do you call it, Fedora here? You've got a Fedora. Yeah, yeah, come on. Thank you for your kind words. Um, You're welcome. Also, you know, thank you for coming to the university and, and sharing your thoughts. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Worcester, just south of Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I do disagree with some of the ways that you characterize the UK. That's and okay. Germany, for that matter, where, okay. I, where I was living before here. But that's not what I want to focus my question on. I, uh, I teach here at the university. I'm a PhD student in philosophy, and I do critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And with my class this week, we addressed the, the issue of kind of this post-truth politics and, and what that might entail and, and whether it's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the question of free speech. Now, I entirely agree with you that free speech is important in our society, and I think everybody in this room it agrees with that by virtue of being here. Mm -hmm. I actually sit on the left of the political spectrum, sure. and I'm here because I believe that part of free speech is also the ability to listen, mm -hmm. and I think that's very important. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you. The angry young lady up here could learn a thing or two. Perhaps she should enroll for your classes. <laughs> Now, given that, my first question, which I'll probably want to follow up on, All right. is do you think there has been a, let's say, an issue with free mm -hmm. speech and truth over the last year? I mean, Oxford said, you know, it's the word of the year, it's kind mm -hmm. of the, the, the most the recent popular, popular yeah. word. And whether, whether truth is important in politics anymore? Mm. This might be my fault. Because I was talking to a Bloomberg Businessweek who did this big profile on me ages ago. And it's okay, he's all right. Um, Bloomberg Businessweek did this big profile on me ages ago. And I dropped into discussion in the course of like two days this, this phrase, uh, post-truth era. And what I meant by it, what I was trying to say, was the facts are no longer enough. You have to also be persuasive and charming and funny and, 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 and all the rest of it. Um, that's what I meant by post-truth, post-fact era, whichever it was that they picked up. Um, and it sort of, it sort of went gangbusters after that. Um, certainly there seem to be two emerging sets of truths in America, and it's, it, it, they're split, on fairly, split fairly evenly down political lines, aren't they? Um, and it's quite disturbing uh, in some ways to sort of see the, the different versions of the universe described by, let's say, the New York Times and Breitbart, for instance. Mm -hmm. I do think that there's been a problem with truth, but I I'm unconvinced that it is the conservative or libertarian side of the argument that has the problem. Um, I think that the conspiratorial um, mythologizing about campus rape culture and the wage gap, the imperviousness to reason and fact that the, that the progressive left has demonstrated over the last 30 years is far more of a risk to democracy and to, to the pursuit of truth than anything that Trump has done in the last year. I think that you know, race baiting, mixing up statistics, selectively quoting statistics, lying about individual cases and, and, and misreporting for ideological reasons around Black Lives Matter, the police and race, has done far more damage to America than Donald Trump sort of vacillating on various things. So I think that, I think there's been a sort of bifurcation in America, Americans and the sort of news sources, the people they trust and where they get their news from, um, which is ultimately not going to be particularly helpful for the pursuit of truth or for democracy. But um, I think it's still, I mean, it's, 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 fake news is still primarily perpetrated by the left. Uh, given that, may I ask a couple of questions to you? Why don't you do one, because then somebody okay. else can have a chance. Yeah, no, so pick absolutely. your best one. Pick okay. your best one, and then I'll, so, I'll, I'll move um, on to someone else. Whilst I don't want to disagree that the left also reports on fake news and mm -hmm. focuses on certain statistics and not others, which is why I attempt to read everything in a world that's increasingly impossible to do that. Mm. Uh, it puts, you in, a, puts you in the minority on your side of the uh, political divide, so you must get some fair credit for that. <laughs> um, uh, focusing, I guess, on, on your paper that you work for. Uh, now, if the CIA came to us and said, and I, I do want to pose this to everybody in the room, and I'm, I'm more than open for a, uh, a different interpretation, but if the CIA came to us and they said 97% of us agree that ISIS has developed a weapon that could wipe out, you know, vast portions of America and destabilize our ecosystem for the next generations to come, would we want to do something about that? And you know what I'm getting at with You're this getting, question? Is this climate change? 
Precisely. Right. So we have so 97% no, 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 of no. the be scientific nice. community. Be nice. So be nice. Yeah. I'm perfectly happy and to... And I, I would love to hear your response on this. You know, fine. I believe in a political well, spectrum we can have this. Fine. fine but when 97% of scientists sure. say this, okay. and then the Trump administration removes any question of climate change from the website, mm -hmm. and says that that's not an issue they want to address for the future. You know, well, I can say there okay. are different political issues that I, I understand ways the ways of solving it. I understand the question. That they can do I that. Understand. But if they erase that discussion, I get really worried for even having a family in the future. And I'd love to hear your response. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I don't have a problem with the Trump administration focusing away from environmental issues about which the United States can do nothing compared to China um, and towards things like trade and immigration, focusing on things that matter rather than identity politics. So I was very happy to see the gay bit of the White House website disappear. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. Like, focus on stuff that actually matters. Like, help the rest of the country fix the fucking economy, you know? And make sure that people can be, do, and say whatever they want. So I wasn't worried about seeing climate change this big, because there's not a huge amount that America, that America can really do about it with, with China, with China and, and, and India anyway. As to your question, you're sort of invoking a lot of authorities there. So if the CIA said that 97%, well, you hit upon something interesting. I saw um, a video of somebody I wouldn't expect to agree with under normal circumstances, of Glenn Greenwald on the BBC sort of completely confounding this reporter by saying, yes, intelligence agencies have bias. Intelligence agencies sometimes go on political crusades. Intelligence agencies sometimes lie. Shocking, I know. Um, and I think there's a sort of... there's a. We have this habit, and it's increasingly, I think, a good, a good thing that we're breaking out of this habit, of just believing what people tell us if they hold particular positions, and we don't dig any deeper. Well, I worked for a climate change NGO in Germany for over a year, and I was there when the IPCC reports were being drafted. I was there in uh, Bali for um, Al Gore's speech. Saw him land in his private jet with his retinue of seven, tar uh, I think they were Tahoes, were they Tahoe's? Maybe they were Suburbans. Um, seven of them, you know, green-fingered Al Gore. And I, was, I was there for all of that. And I saw the level of politics over science that actually goes on. And I saw, I was in the room with scientists who gerrymandered numbers to fit political agendas. And I have to tell you, um, if 97% of any group tells me that something is the case, that makes me deeply suspicious. Because 97% is way too many. Nobody, no issue is agreed upon by 97% of people. Nothing. Not elections, nothing. When 97... All right, well, let's say, content, let's say contentious hypotheses or, you know, uh, matters for discussion, sure, okay. But when something like climate change, which is by no, you know, in, in no sense settled, 97% of scientists is actually a cause for suspicion and alarm for me. And indeed, we know from University of East Anglia and all kinds of other things, just how many obfuscations and manipulations have been made in climate data. The problem is that your side, if I can put it like that, um, made a, a, a PR error in selling climate change to people. You were hysterical about it. It was like a religion. And... Well, it's like a, the problem is that when you're so hysterical and when you punish people for disagreeing, and this is where the free speech element comes in, when you ridicule and punish people for stepping outside of the progressive orthodoxy, when you turn people into laughing stocks or cost them their jobs because they don't agree with you about something, you start to lose sympathy. That's what the progressive left... And that, that, that actually is, is a characteristic, a classic characteristic of all the groups I hate. Black Lives Matter do it. Feminists do it. In fact, feminists have lost. You know, fewer than one in five American women now calls themselves a feminist. Why? Because they're such cunts. <laughs> Not because of they, 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 most women don't want to get into the statistics about campus rape. They don't care. But they just know that they don't want to be like those feminists. Because they're quite like a boyfriend one day and yuck. So, you know, the, the problem is you, 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 you really, you goofed up trying to sell this to the public because you bullied them instead of persuading them. And the situation now is that people simply don't believe the established authorities that are supposed to be there to tell us things. 
And that situation has replicated itself across society. And that, I think, is a more interesting way of looking at sort of post-truth, post-fact societies, that breakdown of, of, of trust and, and belief in, in authority structures that is the fault of no one but those authority structures themselves. Politicians have fucked themselves. The media has fucked itself. Edu higher education has fucked itself. And scientists have fucked themselves. The only people who believe scientists uncritically now are left-wing journalists. That's a real problem. And I can tell you... And I can tell you, you, you were quick to invoke your own life experience, you know, living in Germany, coming from England, and disagreeing with my characterizations. Well, I can tell you from working in a climate change NGO, I don't trust those cunts as far as I can throw them. You have a lot of people pointing at you, so let's do it. Yeah, just, yeah don't, don't be proud of that hat. Um, just stand up and ask your question. I knew we'd get a Federer. What do you call it, Fedora here? You call it Fedora. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Thank you for your kind words. Um, You're welcome. Also, you know, thank you for coming to the university and, and sharing your thoughts. Where are you from? I'm from Midlands uh, Worcester, or just south of Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I do disagree with some of the ways that you characterize the UK that's and okay. Germany, for that matter, where, that's okay. I, where I was living before here. But that's not what I want to focus my question on. I, uh, I teach here at the university. I'm a PhD student in philosophy and I do critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And with my class this week, we addressed the, the issue of kind of this post-truth politics and, and what that might entail and, and whether it's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the question of free speech. Now, I entirely agree with you that free speech is important in our society. And I think everybody in this room it agrees with that by virtue of being here. Mm -hmm. I actually sit on the left of the political spectrum sure. and I'm here because I believe that Part of free speech is also the ability to listen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you. The angry young lady up here could learn a thing or two. Perhaps you should enroll for your classes. <laughs> now, given that, my first question, which I'll probably want to follow up on, All right. is do you think there has been a, let's say, an issue with free mm -hmm. speech and truth over the last year. I mean, Oxford said, you know, it's the word of the year, it's kind mm -hmm. of the, the, the most the recent post -truth popular, thing. popular yeah. word. And whether, whether truth is important in politics anymore. Mm. This might be my fault, because I was talking to a Bloomberg Businessweek who did this big profile no, on me ages ago. And it's okay, he's all right. Um, Bloomberg Business Week, this big problem for me ages ago, and I dropped into discussion in the course of like two days, this, this phrase, uh, post-truth era. And what I meant by it, what I was trying to say, was the facts are no longer enough. You have to also be persuasive and charming and funny and, 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 and all the rest of it. Um, that's what I meant by post-truth, post-fact era, whichever it was that they picked up. Um, and sort of, it sort of went gangbusters after that. Um, certainly there seem to be two emerging sets of truths in America, and it's, it, it, they're split, on fairly, split fairly evenly down political lines, aren't they? Um, and it's quite disturbing uh, in some ways to sort of see the, the different versions of the universe described by, let's say, the New York Times and Breitbart, for instance. Mm -hmm. I do think that there's been a problem with truth, but I I'm unconvinced that it is the conservative or libertarian side of the argument that has the problem. Um, I think that the conspiratorial um, mythologizing about campus rape culture and the wage gap, the imperviousness to reason and fact that the, that the progressive left has demonstrated over the last 30 years is far more of a risk to democracy and to, to the pursuit of truth than anything that Trump has done in the last year. I think that you know, race baiting, mixing up statistics, selectively quoting statistics, lying about individual cases and, and, and misreporting for ideological reasons around Black Lives Matter, the police and race, has done far more damage to America than Donald Trump sort of vacillating on various things. So I think that I think there's been a sort of bifurcation in Ameri Americans and the sort of news sources, the people they trust and where they get their news from, um, which is ultimately not going to be particularly helpful for the pursuit of truth or for democracy. But um, I think it's still, I mean, it's, it's, it's fake news is still primarily perpetrated by the left. Uh, given that, may I ask a couple of questions to you? Why don't you do one, because then somebody else okay. can have a chance. Yeah, no, so pick absolutely. your best one. Pick okay. your best one, and then I'll, so, I'll, I'll um, move on to someone else. Whilst I don't want to disagree that the left also reports on fake news and mm -hmm. focuses on certain statistics and not others, which is why I attempt to read everything in a world that's increasingly impossible to do that. Mm. Uh, it puts, you in, it puts you in the minority on your side of the... Uh,